Abano, Shabbat Shemayim, Badash Hayashem Ka. Our Father, which is in heaven, set apart be your name. Shabbat Shabbat, I'll be up for another Shabbat day. Shabbat for my life and the lives of those who are on this call and those who are not on this call. Please forgive me for my sins, my transgressions, and my iniquity. Please forgive us for our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquity. And Abba, I ask that you may please be merciful when you judge us. Abba, please forgive the sins, the transgressions, and the iniquity of our ancestors. And I ask that you may lead us in, in all manner of truth. Abba, I ask that you may put truth in our inward parts. And I also ask that you may teach us coping, teach us wisdom. Abba, I ask that you may not be angry with us forever. But I ask that in due season, you may be pleased with all the words that proceed out of our mouths and all the works of our hands. Abba, I ask that we would get to a point where we all will desire to do what is right, to do what is righteous, to do what is pleasing in your eyes. And I ask that we would get to a point where we will hate to do that which is evil. We will hate all manner of sin. We will hate all manner of wickedness. Abba, I ask that you may put joy in our heart on this yom, on this Shabbat day. And I ask that we may praise you by singing songs, by giving a testimony, by telling others of the good things that you have done for us throughout the week, even on this yom, on this day. And I've asked that you may keep us far from evil, for there are many traps and paths which lead to death, which lead to destruction. But I ask that you may keep us in that straight and narrow path, which leads to righteousness, which leads to everlasting life. I'll ask that you may please remember those who are sick and afflicted in the flesh, for there are many. Please remember those who are on this call who are sick and afflicted. But we know that you are our healer. Heal us so young, we shall be healed. Save us so young, we shall be saved. I'll ask that you may please remember those who are worn with things in the mind. Please remember those who are still mourning the loss of loved ones. And I ask that you may put joy in their heart, heal their heart in new season. I'll be asked that we will not be angry with you for the things that we may not have in this life, but ask that we will still give praises to you despite the things that we have and despite the things that we don't have. And I ask that you, that you may renew our minds, strengthen our minds so that we are able to retain your word. And I ask that it will never depart from us. I ask we get older, the mind starts to deteriorate. So I ask Abba that you may strengthen our minds so that we are able to do your will, so that we are able to read your precepts to remember your precepts and to understand your precepts. I ask that you may please remember that we have grown up in this captivity as there are many horrors and there are many forms of sin and there is much destruction. I ask that you may cleanse our mind because we have become contaminated with the things of this life, the ways of this world. So I ask that you may wash our mind and heal our mind from the trauma that we have suffered in this life. Heal our minds so that we are able to understand your precepts and also do them. I ask that you may give us a strong will and mind so that we are able to do your service to help those who need help. I ask that you may heal our hearts also. Heal our physical bodies so that we are fully equipped to walk around, to do your will, to do your service, to labor for you, to labor for righteousness. I ask that you may heal our bodies, especially our minds, so that we are able to please you. I advise that you may renew our minds also so that we are able to see you as our help. And I ask that we would never put any man or woman in your place. Protect Helene 119 reads. Protect Helene 121 reads. For I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from Yahweh, maker of the heavens and the earth. He does not allow your foot to be moved. He who watches over you does not slumber. See, he who is guarding Israel not slumbers nor sleeps. Yahweh is your guard, Yahweh is your shade at your right hand. The sun does not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Yahweh guards you from all evil, he guards your being. Yahweh guards you going out and you're coming in now and forever. I ask that you may accept this temple of this prayer for being your will. And I ask that you may give us all the patience to wait for the things that we have requested of you. For it is your will that shall be done. Bless you are Yahweh, bless is your name, Yahweh. And bless all those who come in the mighty name of Yahweh in truth. I mean, I mean, so be it. Hallelujah. I mean, I mean. Shabbat shalom, Ms. Bakai. Now I will turn the floor over to Zakane Yaqua for the culture study. Hello, yeah. 
All praise, honor, and esteem be to the Most High, whose name is Yahweh. Is Yahweh. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpachah. Shabbat Shalom. Um, back on a regular Shabbat. Halal Yah. Um, today, I'm, I'm just going to go into um, the language, pretty much strictly the language today. Um, uh, let me share screen real quick. Give me just a second. Uh, okay. Let me know when y'all can see this. All right. So, so um, I'm going to go through our website. This is our website, um, truelightbyathyala.net. And I'm going to be teaching from the resources that we have on the website. And I want to walk everybody through it. Um, especially those that are that are that are kind of new to uh, the language portion, the language and culture portion. But also um, during this past Shabbat, a couple uh, couple of y'all came up and asked, when are we going to start back with the language portion, teaching the language? So um, for the near future, uh, until we get another, um, until we get our schedule pretty much laid out, um, where we don't have to keep changing it, we're going to use this portion, this first portion for the language, for the language. All right. So um, this is how we get to our resources. This is our website, truelightbyathyah.net, right? And then we go into the lessons. And you see, we got Shabbat lessons. Um, the Hebrew Academy is where we're going to be at today. And the Hebrew Academy is, um, where all our resources are that we teach biblical Hebrew from. All the resources that 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 um, is available to anybody that comes to the website. Um, let me go back one. And then we have the student portal. Let me open up that student portal real quick. The student portal is um, for the Talmudina breed. Those that um, are in the class, um, that are in the Hebrew language class. And to get to this, portal there's a, a a sign in so those that are interested in becoming uh talmudini breed in this class in in uh true like bath ya language class y'all can hit me up on on uh email or through telegram or telephone text and i'll add you to our class and give you the the, the password to get into the um into the uh student portal all right, but in the student portal, um, we have the resources that library that's available to everybody. But then there's specific assignments for the Talmudina brief that I put in here from time to time. Homework, um, uh, as you can see, vocabulary to to practice, um, and then um, any type of uh, specific study points for the Talmudina brief that are in the class. And then from time to time, we'll do webinars where um, I'll post a link to a video that will help us out in language. Um, and then you have access through this webinar to all of the lessons um, that we've taught so far, all of the lessons, cultural and language. All right. Um, and that's in the portal. You have to be a student in class to get the password to get to the student portal. All right. But for the Hebrew Academy, you don't have to be part of the class. If you're interested in the language, all these resources are available to anybody that 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 uh, comes into the site and goes to the lessons tab. This is the Hebrew Academy, and this is where we're going to be teaching from today. All right. And also, um, just for tidbits, uh, myself and and Elder uh, Mikael, um, we come together on. Uh, Shani, Shalishi, and Kamishi, um, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. And he and I uh, go over the language um, as part of the study. So if anybody wants to join that schedule, um, uh, Tuesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 9 p.m. on my Zoom uh, page, not True Light Zoom, on my Zoom page. Like I said, just just send me an email, a text, or even through Telegram, and I'll add you to it, and y'all can join in on that on Tuesday, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday also. 
So, all right. So let's get into to the language. Um, I specifically want to talk about. Um, I specifically want to talk about syllabizing. Syllabizing, and that's really how to how to pronounce the word correctly, the Hebrew word correctly, right? And and it's broken down in the syllables, just like we learn in English from grade school all the way through college, right? Um, how to syllabize the words. And that's how we get the correct pronunciation, all right? So all of those that, that we're not gonna start over in Hebrew language. For y'all that are in here that are new, we're not gonna start over in the Hebrew language, but you have access to everything to get you up to where we are now. And, and if you wanna join in that way, and like I said, on, on Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, if you wanna come on and, and, and study with us, you can do that too, but we're not gonna start over. We're not going to start over. We use this handy Hebrew chart that's on the website. Uh, you saw where I pulled it up at. And this is basically where we teach the alphabet, um, the Hebrew alphabet, and the uh, vowel points. All right. I'm not going to go all the way through it, but you see over here on the side, uh, on the left side, let me blow that up just a little bit. Can y'all see that? Okay. All right, Toda, Toda. Okay, so over here on the side is the Aleph Bet, uh, Aleph Bet, Gimel, Dalet, right? All the way down to uh, Tav, right? And it gives you uh, the sort of consonantal value of what that, what that consonant, what that letter sounds like. That's just the, the basic consonant, right? So we got the uh, Aleph, where they say it's silent, and most of the time it is, and then you come down to the bait or the bet, and it's B as in boy. It makes the B as in boy sound. So that's the example that they're using here, right? And then over here is the, is this is the block form, that first characters. And what they mean by that is, is this is how a computer would do it or a printer or a typewriter would do it. And then you go across to the other block and that's how we would write it handwrite. This is how it looks if we hand wrote it. And then of course the next block over is what it looks like in cursive, as if we were writing in cursive. And then the far block over here is uh, the, uh, um, the value, the, the numerical value of that letter, which is all plays significant parts in our language, in the Hebrew language. All right, which is a little bit different than the English, what we're used to. All right, I know this is a, a review for those that have been in the class and are pretty much reading by now. But just for those that are that are interested in joining the language class or interested in the language, you can find all of this on our website. All right, and then we come over to what we call the Nakud, which is the vowel points. This is how these letters are um, pronounced not just their continental value, but how they are pronounced. So we see here the olive, this X is not an olive. It's just saying that's a consonant, any one of the consonants, right? And then you have the patak under it and it makes the ah sound as in yacht. And, and really it makes the ah sound more like cat, right? And one thing that we gotta be, and this is for you Talmudina Breek that has been here for a while, that are, that are, are reading already, is um, you got to remember the short vowels and the long vowels, the short vowels and the long vowels, right? Um, I think I put that in the portal, in the student, um, the student portal, but you got to remember those short vowels and the long vowels, but these are all the Hebrew vowels. And then uh, what's not on this list is combination vowels, right? Where you'll see uh, like a Sagol Yod or a Patak Yod, those are combination vowels, all right? Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later, but this is where for you get, for y'all that are that are new and are interested in the language, you can go to the website, pull up this handy Hebrew chart and start learning the alphabet and the, the, the vowel points, how the vowels sound, all right? So if this was a, uh, um, if we look at that first one where we got the X under what they call the patak, right? If that was a, a bet, if that was a bet right there, it would be ba, 
it would be ba, or I'm really to be more accurate, it would be bah, right? And then this uh, kwamat, if it was a mem, it would be ma, ma. That's the general rule, right? And then we come down to the chirik, right? And let's say that was a, a gimel, it would be gi, gi, all right? Just to give you uh, a preview. And for the Talmudina Breed, get back into this because I started to see a trend and that's what we're going to cover today. Um, when we, the last time we were together uh, before Sukkot, when we were doing our reading, I started to see a trend and we're going to go over that today. That's the focus today is syllabizing. All right. Let me close this. And we're going to go to And we 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 primarily use this Hebrew first Hebrew primer for the beginning students, and all of us pretty much are still in beginning, but some of us are more uh, advanced in the beginner stage than the others. All right. So I want to go here first. This is the pretty. Um, it gives us a good example of syllabizing. but then we're gonna to go to another textbook um, that's gonna give it a little bit more clarity, all right? So we're talking about syllables, syllabizing. So if I ask, anybody can, can answer, if I ask how many syllables are in the word commandment, what would be the answer? Anybody just key up and or open your mic and, 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 and answer. Bradley how many says three. three? Cain, Cain. Cain, that is, that is important to remember how many syllables are in that particular word, right? That, that uh, applies to Hebrew also. Because sometimes if you don't syllabize it right, it could slightly change the meaning or, or, or um, not necessarily the meaning, but, but the application. So instead of doing it to somebody, it's doing it for somebody or somebody is doing it. If we don't, if even in that 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 um, incorrectly syllabizing could change it a little bit, right? Uh, for instance, uh, if we said, um, well, I, we'll get to that a little bit later. All right, so it says in syllables. This is in the first Hebrew primer that's on the website in the General Hebrew Academy, all right? It says uh, a Hebrew syllable always begins with a consonant, the Aleph, and the iron are considered consonants. And the reason why they put that in there is because sometimes it's it's um they're they're silent or sometimes they're 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 uh, considered or they act like vowels. All right. So just remember that. And they're saying including the aleph and the iron are considered consonants in this general sense as far as syllabizing is concerned. It consists of either a consonant plus a vowel, right? So we here we have the sha, right? And, and we know we read from right to left, and the pattern is consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, right? So that's what they're saying. A consonant, which is this, which is the sheen right here, plus a vowel, which is the kamats under it, right? So a Hebrew syllable always begins with the consonant. It consists of either a consonant plus a vowel, a consonant plus a vowel plus a consonant, right? So we see here we got the uh, tav and we got the sheen and it's pronounced tish. Tish because of the, the nakud that's under it, the hirik, all right? Now it is often easier to read Hebrew words that have many letters when they are broken down into syllables. And the example here is ha-aretz, ha-aretz, right? So if we syllabize that, if we syllabize that, we would have ha a and that's what they're demonstrating here, ha a -ret. All right. And then to syllabize this one over here, um, tamid, 
Tamid, we got the Ta, we got the Mead. Because of the, you see, there's no, there's, remember, consonant, vowel, consonant, vowel, consonant. All right? That's the pattern they're talking about. All right, moving on. And then we're going to get into the syllables and the shiwas. Well, they got Shiva here. Some people say Shiva. Some people say Shiva or Shiva. All right. Um, but I'm going to go to the next um, um, textbook because I think it's a little bit clearer. All right. Any questions on this syllabizing with this general rule before we move on? All right, we're going to move on. All right. So now we're talking about the Shiwas. And this is what we were, this is the trend I saw the last time we were together and we were reading um, um, from the, from the uh, Torah. We were not applying the Shiwa rule um, correctly. So I want to go over that to, today because it affects um, the syllabizing and the punctual and the pronunciation of the words, right? So um, this is in um, toward reading biblical Hebrew, the textbook, right? We, we saw that. Let me go back. Toward reading and understanding biblical Hebrew. That's what, that's the textbook we're in. All right. And we're in um, Section 3.1, and we're talking specifically about the Shewas now. And this is for you, Talmudina Breit, that are that are already reading. All right. So it says the Shewa. That accent makes it a she and not a siwa. <laughs> That's all. All right. And then the sign for Shewa, this one right here. Can y'all see that? Oh, I need to blow it up a little bit. The, the, the two, it looks like ellipses. Well, it looks like the two dots on one dot on top of the other. That's a shiva or a shiva, all right? And it has at least two functions. It can represent a half vowel or mark the absence of a vowel. And this section describes how to distinguish these functions of the shiva, all right? And what it means by half vowel is it's not going to get its full Pronunciation. So instead of saying um, uh, the full ah, it's gonna get it's gonna get the short or half value. Eh, eh. All right. So moving on, um, vocal shiwa means it's gonna get a pronunciation, um, the consonant and a vowel sound. All right. The vocal shiwa is a half vowel like the I and beautiful. So it's not beautiful, it's beautiful. Or the A and sofa, it's not sofa, it's sofa. All right, that's, that's the example they're giving for a half vowel. And then a silent shiwa, which means um, that it's only gonna get the consonantal value. Remember like uh, the bet is B as in boy, but it's B, B. It's just gonna get the consonantal value not the full value that has the vowel point under it, right? So a silent shiwa, you're only going to pronounce the consonantal value minus the naku, the vowel point that's under it. When two consonants occur with no vowel between them, the Masoretes, and we went over that, inserted the shiwa as a placeholder. In English, consonants can be placed side by side as in place the two consonants, the P and the L. But in Hebrew, every consonant except the last letter of the word must be followed by a vowel, must be followed by a vowel point. And this shiwa is also called the shiwa quiescence. And we don't worry about that quiescence <laughs> or quiescence. All right, we just call it a shiwa, both of them. The three hataf vowels, and, and we're not going to, really get into that. Um, uh, it's really rushed sound instead of a, 
half value. It's pretty rushed, but also this um, this Shiwa with the Kamat kind of changes it from that would be a rushed ah sound. It's really going to change it into an O oh sound. Don't worry too much about that now. I'm really speaking to the Talmudina breed. All right. And there are three basic rules for distinguishing vocal and silent shiwa. This is what we got to pay attention to, Talmudina Bree. If the preceding vowel is short, that's why I said you got to remember those short vowels and the long vowels. If you have any questions about the short vowels and the long vowels, um, let me know at the end of this class and we'll go over it. I'll, I'll, I'll either be able to uh, simply demonstrate it or we might have to hold another class and, and review the short vowels and the long vowels. All right. If the preceding vowel is short, the shiwa is silent. If the preceding vowel is long, the shiwa is vocal. After a short vowel, we see that uh, yod with the with the uh, uh, patak under it, right? And the patak is a short vowel. The patak is the short vowel. So that shiwa that's following it is going to be what? It's going to be vocal. The preceding vowel is short. The I mean, uh, silent. So the preceding vowel is short. The shiwa is silent. Yim leche. Yim lechu. Yim leku. And that's the way they got it um, transliterated here. Yam leku. After a short vowel, the patak is a short vowel, then that shiwa that follows it is going to be silent. After a long vowel, which we see the tisri is a long vowel, the shiwa that follows it, the shiwa that follows it is, is uh, vocal. Right? So you got yeshabu, yeshabu, uh, yeshabu, yeshabu. Where here, it's short. The shiwa is silent. Yim, yim. It just gets its consonantal value. Yim, yim. Not yime. Yim. Down here, when the vowel, the tishri is the long vowel, then the shiwa that follows it, the shiwa that follows it is vocal. So you get... Yeshabu, 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 not yeshbu. All right. Number two, shiwa after a letter written with the Degesh. And we went over the Degesh, right? And then in that uh, student portal, in the student portal, in one of those uh, webinars, there's a video that really goes into detail about the Degesh, right? It's very clear, it's very easy to follow. So if y'all don't remember the, the rule on the Degesh, the Degeshin, the two types of Degesh, then go back and review that. So the Shiwa, after a letter written with the Degesh, is always vocal, is always vocal. And then the Shiwa before a letter with the Degesh is always silent. A Shiwa, after a letter written with the Degesh, is always vocal. The shiwa before a letter with the Degesh is always silent. And the example they got here, you see that little dot, let me blow it up a little bit. That dot is the Degesh, right? And it's saying uh, um, after a letter written with the Degesh, so the letter is the is the fake. Right? That's the letter with the Degesh. And the Shiwa is following it or is after the Degesh. That's the way they got it. Uh, that's the way they're trying to explain it here. Is always vocal. So it would be Yipalu. Yipalu. Not Yipalu. Yipalu. All right. And then the next example is that the Gesh comes before, I mean, the uh, the Shiwa comes before the Degesh. The Shiwa, 
comes before the Degesh. That dot is the Degesh. The two dots here is the Shiwa. Right? So if the if the Shiwa comes before the Degesh, the Shiwa is always silent. Right? And so what they got here is Yik Tov. Yik Tov, not Yika Tov. Yik Tov. All right, moving on. This is the Shiwa. This is what we were having problems with the last time, with the trend, not properly uh, applying that rule. All right, get that out the way. And when there are T two Shiwas in a row, remember the double Shiwa, we talked about this before. When there are two Shiwas in a row, the first is always silent and the second is always vocal. The first with two Shiwas side by side, Two she was side by side. The first is always silent and the second is always vocal. And it says, unless they are under the last two letters of a word, where they are both silent. And the examples they got here, these two she was, these two she was are side by side, right? These two she was here are side by side. So the first she is always silent. Yeesh, the second Shiwa gets its half value, Yishmaru, 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 and this is the way they got it transliterated, Yishmaru, not right? And when they see this at the end of a word where the two Shiwas are side by side, and, and, well, we'll just consider this inside this final cough. We, we'll consider that a Shiwa, but it's not really a Shiwa, right? But we see the two Shiwas that's acting as a Shiwa. The two Shiwas are side by side at the end of a word. It says both of them are silent, right? And it would be uh, easier to pronounce it if... if uh, <laughs> well, you'll see. You'll see what I mean by that with the with the two being silent. So these two last letters gets just their consonantal value. They don't get a full um, vowel uh, pronunciation, right? So you get yeb 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 and it's almost hard, and that's really based on our English. Uh, growing up speaking English to kind of silence that last um, Shiwa in the final cough. So, Wayib, Wayib, Wayib. All right, does that make sense? And really, if you're not staying up on this, if you're not practicing it, if you're not studying it on a regular basis, then these rules kind of fall out. And then we kind of wing it as we're reading it. All right. We kind of wing it as we're reading it. So that was just a trend that I saw um, the last time we were we were reading uh, in the Torah. That was a trend I saw, and, and, and I felt like we needed to address that to get us back into the proper pronunciation and the proper syllabizing of words, all right? And so when we syllabize that, right, consonant, vowel, syllable, consonant, vowel, syllable, and the consonant with... Uh, uh, the placeholder of a vowel syllable. And remember, I'm not going to go over it today, but remember we have open syllables and closed syllables. This is for the Talmudina Breed that has been in uh, study for a while and it already read. There's an open syllable and a closed syllable. We got to remember those rules also. If we're going to pronounce it properly and correctly. Okay. All right. Any questions? We're going to get into the read here in a second. Any questions before we get into the reading? Uh, Zakane, uh, we got a question in the chat. Is it can you put up the sheet with the long and short vowels really, really click, quick, please? Um, let me see if I can. Uh, 
Yeah, I, I, I would have to go through it a lot. And, and I'll tell you what, um, next Shabbat, I'll have it posted. Or actually, I, I'll post it in Telegram um, later on today. I'll post it in Telegram, okay? Okay. Okay. All right, any other questions before we get into the reading? All right, let me stop share real quick. And like I said, this is all available to us on, on the website and the Hebrew Academy. And then specifically for the Talmudina Breed that are in the class, you can go to the portal and get a little bit more detailed instructions like you saw where we have the assignments and the homework. And then every now and then I'll, I'll link a webinar to where we can go and, and, and watch a video, all right, to get a little bit more clarity. And I just want to express too that this is this is biblical Hebrew that we're teaching. Um, not necessarily teach you to speak Hebrew, but it's going to be inevitable. The more you practice, and the more you see uh, the syntax of 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 um, verses, it's gonna it's it's inevitable that you'll start to learn how to speak it. Maybe not like a natural born uh, Hebrew speaker, but you will eventually. Uh, be able to speak in, in short sentences. You'll be able to communicate, not necessarily speak the language, but what we're teaching is how to read the language and kind of get a gist of what it's saying in Hebrew. And the further we go into it and the more we stay uh, dedicated to it, the, the, the more accurate we're going to get. Um, and like I said, it'll be inevitable that you'll at least be able to communicate in, in uh, Hebrew language, this uh, what they call modern Hebrew. All right, let me stop share real quick and pull up. Um, Zach King, why are you doing that? I have uh, some information I'll share with you on the shoe to make it much easier for for them to grasp but without so much detail. It'll be a little easy for them to get right to the point of understanding how to apply the Shiva. So I'll share the information with you. Okay, you, you wanna do that now, Maury, or, or for a future class? Uh, I mean, if you're about to pull something else up now, um, you can uh, pull it up now and you, we can go back over it next week, but I'll give it to you that way you can look it over. Um, it'll be much easier. Um, so it won't be as detailed with all those rules. Okay. And it'll be right to how to function, how it functions. So I'll share that with you. Okay. okay. All right. Can y'all see my screen? Okay. Okay. Toda, toda. So we're going to be in Deborah, um, or Deuteronomy chapter 30 today. And we're going to read verses one through seven. All right, so Talmudina Breed, get ready to read. Uh, these verses are kind of long. Don't let that intimidate you. Apply the rules that we talk about, and, and we'll be able to get through it. All right? All right, so we're at Deborah or Deuteronomy chapter 30, starting at verse one. And first up is uh, Koti Shaquan, if she's, if she's available. I see a hand. Uh, uh, just a minute, uh, Koti Shaquan. Um, Azaria, who? Uh, Shabbat Shalom, you got a question? Shabbat Shalom. No, I was just offering to read. <laughs> okay. Uh, I tell you what. Um, if, if Is the Koti Shaquan on? Okay, she's here. It's okay. Okay. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't planning on having you read uh, uh, a dome. Um, if somebody want to yield to you, I don't mind that either. Um, I'll yield. I think that was uh, Fati hey, hey, you said a long verse. You had two people yielding to it. You said you can get off the long verse. Everybody yielded. <laughs> they glad the brother stepped up. <laughs> okay. Who, I, I, I heard one voice. Sha Sha Shaquan said, let, uh, let her yield today. OK. I'll let her yield. Uh, Adonis, are you? Abakrashah, verse one. 
game. Uh, can you see it? Can I can see it? Um, where haya he ya ya bow aleka kal hade barin hade barin ha ele ha bere ha baraka we ha Kelala Asher Natati Le Lefa Neka um, Waha Shebota El Le Babeka be kav hago hag yeah hag goyim hagoyim asher hede he di kak kaka yehoa eloheka shema. Hello, yeah. So uh, good reading, good reading, Nado. Good reading. Um, um, let me ask you a question, and it's not to put you on the spot, but just for a teaching uh moment, right? So when you went here to um um this word right here, call hadabarin. What why is that why is that uh dalit right there with the shiwa? Why is that pronounced? Why is that vocal? Um, because of the digesh, the digesh, um, it, it's kind of like a, a double up. So, um, it would be hard there. Um, the digesh is well, literally the digesh. <laughs> That's the reason why we I, I, I double it up. Okay. So you remember that rule that said when the, when the uh, shiwa follows the digesh, it's vocal, right? And you yes. said it the other way too, which which we talked before. Where that da, that dagesh doubles the dalit, and if it doubles the dalit, it doubles the shiwa, and so the first shiwa is silent. Had deberim, had deberim is how it would really go because you would double that dalit. Good job, told me your job. Hello, yeah. All right. Up next is Akoti uh, Imuna, verse two, Babekusha. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka. Shabbat Shalom. Okay. Um, washa, washa, ad Yahawa Eloheka, washama, washama ta, wakolo, kekol. Asher Anuki Mitsad Mitsad Mitsadka Hayom Ata Uva Neka Bekal Libabka Ubkal Nafsheka and, and let me go back up and read uh, verse one in English. I, I forgot to read that. Uh, verse one says, and it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations where the Yah, thy Elohim, have driven thee. And in verse two, and shalt return unto Yah, thy Elohim, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. We saw that in uh, in chapter six, right? Ubakal, Nefeshka, Ubakal, Myotika, right? We saw some of that, the same language, all right? All right, verse three, and that will be uh, Akoti Talia, Babekasha.
Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Weshev Yahweh Eloeka et Shavoteka Weri Meka Weshev We Weki Bazka Mikal Ha Hemim Asher Afi the Ka Yawa Yawa Eloeka Shama. Okay, Toda, Toda. Let's go back to this this word right here. What is what is this word? Um Weri Weri Meka Weri Meka uh Weri Ka Meka. There you go. And then uh, let's try this one one more time. Weki Batka. What's that in the cool? Weki Be Betka. King Beska. That's told me oh, told me oh. Good job. Good reading. All right, are we, we're seeing how these, these she was are affecting, right? And, and, and we're starting to see how those rules, what they're talking about in those rules apply in how we pronounce those words, right? We'll move on. Uh, and it says in the English that then Yah, that Elohim will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations where the Yah, that Elohim have scattered thee. We're catching, we're getting a the theme, right? All right, verse four is Bati uh, Bat Zion, Baba Kashap. Okay, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. In Yehweh Nidakak Bik Ze Hashamayim. Misham ye yika betska Yehua Eloheka U Mishama U Misham yik ka King King Toda Toda Revive. Good reading. Good reading. What's what rule are you applying here in this in this first word? Let me and try. Okay. <laughs> um ye, and then that that shiwa is silent. So ye and then ye, because that's the sigol. So ye ye. Okay, okay, toda, toda ruba. And in the English it reads, and uh, verse four says, if any of thine be driven out unto the outer outermost parts of heaven, Shamaim, from thence will Yah, thy Elohim, gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Couple more verses. Uh, verse five is um, Akoti Zamiria, Baba Kasha. Wet wehe wehe be aka Yahua Eloheka El Haaret Ash Asher Yara Yara Shu Ab Abo Teka We 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 re we reach we reach ta ha wa wa hey wa hey ti wa hey tib ka wa he wa wa here wa here uh uh 
Wait, Wahir, yeah, Wahir Buka. There you go. Wait, okay, I got one more. May, may, ah, uh, may, wait, may, ab, may, abo, may, abo, teka. King, 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 king. I see, I see you you're thinking about those rules when you pronounce it. Hello, good job, good job. Hello, yeah, hello, yeah. And you saw that, right? The double shiwa. You saw that double shiwa where the first shiwa is silent and the second shiwa is, is vocal. King, King, told, told me old job, told me old job. Apply that that rule well. Guys, I can't. If you said anything after I was done reading, we couldn't hear you. You got kicked off. Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you read? Go back to when I was finished. Okay. So what I was saying is is that double she were here when we went over that rule. You applied it uh, properly. So <laughs> I was just giving you. Uh, Am I still on? Can I be heard? Okay. 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 Yeah, I was just acknowledging how you applied that rule properly there with the double she word. And, and I could see it um, when you were pronouncing it, when you were working it out. <laughs> I could see how you was thinking, okay, that's a double she word. What do I got to do with the double she word? And you did it correctly. So, hello, yeah. Hello, yeah. Toe greeting. And in the English, it reads, and Yah the Elohim will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. I'm going somewhere with this, this chapter in these verses. So <laughs> next, uh, verse six, um, Adon Elder Mikael, Mabkasha. Oh, yeah, what? The the e ka the e ka. Okay. Le a ha le a hava it ya wa eloheka. They call la le 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 leva leva paka u u u call nish fe nish fe nish ne ne fish ka. The fish cup Le Ma on Le Ma on Ka 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 Ye Ye Ka Ka Ye Ye Ka Okay, Toda, Toda, good reading, Elder. Good reading, Elder. And so remember that the double Shiwa rule. The first she yeah, the first is sound. Is sound. Right. So it'll be Nef Nefeshka. Nefka. Neshka. Neshka. Right. Neshka. Okay. Right. And, and this one's kind of tricky too, but you work it out. Chayek. Chayeka. Good job. Good job. Hello, yeah. And then in the English it reads, and Yah thy Elohim will circumcise thine heart. And the heart of thy seed to love Yah thy Elohim with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live, that thou mayest live. And then the last one, verse seven. So I can. Can you go back to that one for a second, if you don't okay. mind? Okay. Um, pull that back up. 
Um, I noticed that everybody's pronouncing a lot of times the uh, the shiwa at the beginning of the word. They're giving it a segol sound. The three dots, which makes the e eh sound segol. The shiwa okay. does not make the e eh sound. It is a shortened sound. So most Hebrew words, well, actually, pretty much all Hebrew words start off with a, a a class vowel root. So when you put the vowel points in, it's telling you how to pronounce the vowel outside of just it being an a class vowel. So the shiwa is shortening it. So where you have ah, ah is a long sound. So uh, so you wouldn't say my room, you say my room. So you just shorten it. So instead of saying ma or ba, you just shorten the A sound or that I sound. So like in lagoon, lagoon, you don't say lagoon, you say lagoon, but you don't say legoon. So you say lagoon. So it's a shortened form of the long I and you just shorten it up. So it's a hurried sound. So in maroon, it's the short A sound and it's not my room. In lagoon, it's the short A sound, not the long A. So just, uh, just to be mindful of that, Mr. God, it's kind of like a hurried sound, and you're not dragging out or holding the ah sound. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. And, and, and a lot of us were doing that. A lot of us were doing that. So when we see that, like Moray was saying, this this is not That's what I do. La Babaka. It's Le Babaka. Le. Not La. It doesn't get the full sound. Remember, we went through that was the half sound. It was the, it, they called it half, but like me and Moray Smock, we say hushed or, or, or hurry or rushed. So you don't get the full la, you get the look. Yeah. Not, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll come back to you, Shashmar. See you, hand. I'll come hey. back to you when we get done with verse seven. Uh, is, is that it, uh, Maurice Mark? You would want to move on? Kane, Kane, yes, sir. Kane. Kane, Toda, Toda, Maurice. Um, and verse seven. Uh, this will be the last verse, uh, Aki Nathan, Bakasha. Wanatan, Wanatan, Yawa, Elo Heka, Eight, Call. Ha'al, ha'alo, ha'alok. Look at that again. What's that? What's that? Ha'alok. There you go. Ha'e, ha'e, le, al, lo, no. Oh, 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 yeah, Becca. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Wow, 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 wow. So, so, mm -hmm. so. Son, 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 eka. Okay. Ash, asher, rad, rada, 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 foka, rada, peka. All right. Okay, okay. Good job. Tob, tob job. Um, but but remember, um, we just went over that. How would you how would you uh, enunciate this first shiwa here with the race? It would be it would be vocal, right? Right. Half half vocal or rushed. So how would you how would you make that sound? Rada rada. There you go, Rida, Rida, not Rada, Rida. Toe, toe, toe job. <laughs> you want to read it, that last word one more time? Cain, Rada, Rada, Foka. Cain, Fu, Fu. Right? That's a Shavuk, Ooh sound. Cain, tov job, tov job. And in the English it reads, and Yah, thy Elohim, will put all these curses upon thine enemies and on them that hate thee, which persecuted, persecuted thee, right? 
And so the, the reason why I went here is because it does have a lot of the she was in, in uh, the passages, the passage we just read. It has a lot of the she was in it. So we can start getting back into the practice of the she was. And like Maurice Samak said, um, when it's vocal she was, it's always half, half sound. They say half in the textbook, but it's really like we explain it. It's rushed. Instead of saying the full, like Maurice Mock, I'm going to use his example. Instead of saying lagoon, it's lagoon. Instead of saying lagoon, we say lagoon. And 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 that A in um, lagoon, it would have the Shiwa under it if it was Hebrew. So it's lagoon, not lagoon or lagoon. It's lagoon. And that's why I went there. Um, but particularly like last night, in our studies, Maurice Samak was talking about being prepared, being prepared, getting prepared, be prepared to be Yisrael, to be Yisrael. So in, in this passage here, this is what uh, Moshe was, was um, encouraging Yisrael when they get ready to go into the land, don't forget. And if you do um, make the most high angry to where he scatters us, that remember, first remember why you got scattered, and then come back to Torah, come back to the way of life. The Most High just trained us in 40, 40 years on how to be Yisrael. Um, so I thought that would be a little enhancing, a little, um, um, and we get to practice the Shiwas again and the, and the uh, syllabization, all right? Um, I, I'm not going to open the floor for questions, but I am going to answer uh, Adon Shashimar. He had his hand raised for a while. If you've got questions, next Shabbat, um, bring those up first. I'll, I'll entertain the questions before we go into the lesson next Shabbat. Or if you want to come back on at the 630, if you're coming back on at the 630, then then you can bring those questions too at the 630. Uh, don't shash Shamar. So, so, yeah, I, I just had a question um, regarding verse six. I was trying to, I was listening to what Moore was saying. I was trying to figure out if that changed the sound of the word. Um, but because I was trying to figure out if it was, if it was to be pronounced uh, Nefeshka or Neshka, because I was trying to figure out what he was saying changed the sound of the word uh, in verse six. Okay, so do you remember what it said? If you're following, if the she was following a short vowel or a long vowel, do you remember that rule? Yeah. Okay. What was it? So, and that's why you got to know your short vowel. So, is the patak a short vowel or a long vowel? Patak. The short vowel. Stop. Right, it's a short vowel. So if a shiwa follows a short vowel, is it vocal or, or silent? Stop. Okay, 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 that makes sense. Okay, yeah, I was just trying to, because I was pronouncing, I was like, hold on, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, you know. Okay, but then we got this double rule here too, with a double shiwa. So that's a little tricky. It's a little tricky. <laughs> can okay. Can all right. Can, can. All right. Before I totally close out, Maurice Mock, uh, you you have any uh anything to add? I know. Just keep practicing, keep working on it, because our goal to one day be fluent. Uh, y'all doing a good job. But like I said, we will give you some shield rules because uh, that's going to be very key. Uh, because when you get to the bigger words, being able to pronounce the she will properly will help you be able to uh, syllabize the words as uh, uh, as Zakane was bringing out. So we present you with that and probably just stay on the she will uh, for a little while longer, Zakane, before moving too much further until they really get that. And, um, you know, I probably also try to put a, a list together of, of, of some words that has them and we try to mix them up and let them just pronounce those words as a reading assignment for next week, along with the regular reading. But a uh, great, great, uh, great portion today. King, King. All right, Ms. Pekka, uh, towed off for all participation. Uh, and I'll just remind you that um, if y'all, if those that are not in the class, um, just hit me up on, on, on uh, either my text, my email, uh, or in the telegram, and I'll add you. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom. Uh, appreciate the portions I came, appreciate the lesson. And Mishpaka, I know uh, we, we sit in, a, in, in classes sometimes, we like, why in the world are we going through all of that for those who are not interested in learning the language? But uh, as we just went over last night, study to show that self approve, uh, rightly dividing or rightly handling the word of the Most High. In order to properly do that, we also need to know what the language actually says. So we do have translations um, of the Bibles, but when, like I say, when you see sometimes we use different versions, because sometimes depending on the passage, 
other versions may be better translated per what's written there. And as I came was saying, if we get the uh, pronunciation wrong, sometimes we can actually switch things because we might be in the wrong. Uh, we might be saying something singular, masculine or feminine. Um, it, it has verb tenses and all these different things which will switch the thought. So when we're translating, we're going back. It's not saying that we have to teach a whole lesson right now in all Hebrew, but it's, it's just helping us be able to identify what's actually written so we can't continue to be misled by so many different people. And just understand that um, we speak here a mixed dialect because me and Zakane's preferred dialect is not necessarily what's commonly called the biblical Hebrew. I really don't subscribe more so to the biblical Hebrew, but because of uh, scholarship or sounding like we're scholarly, and knowing something, when you go to certain people, they're going to be using what's considered the modern or the biblical Hebrew. So as Bas Yon asked, isn't conversational Hebrew and the biblical Hebrew different? Uh, in in, in, uh, in some, some instances it is, and sometimes it isn't. So like I said, it's a whole lot of broken Hebrew that we're speaking. And then we also have a preferred dialect. But in understanding the language and the function, you'll understand how to translate or what's been translated better and they give you a more informative understanding. So if we are Hebrew Israelites, we're trying to labor to getting back to our native tongue that should be our native tongue, which is the language that the most I us with and do understand that many scholars debate certain letters and certain pronunciation. So we're not always looking to be sticklers for exact pronunciation, but as long as we understand um, these grammar rules and, uh, and, and what they do to the words, that's what we're trying to do so we can have proper translation and study to show ourselves approved. So, total for the time you put in as I came to bring this forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Maury, can, can I say one more thing? Can I say one more thing for Yes, sir, of uh, course. Okay, yeah, I, 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 um, yes, we are talking about the proper pronunciations, like, and, and I'll give you an example. I was going to give that example during the class, uh, but like um, the, the pronunciation of ruler or, or, um, or sovereign, um, and the pronunciation of angel um, is is if you don't pronounce it right, you can right because one is 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 malach, malach, okay. and that's ruler. That's like ruler. Um, melech is king, but ruler is malach, 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 and then angel is malach, malach. So if if we not if we don't mm -hmm. pay attention to this, one has a shewa, one has an aleph, and the other one. But if you don't pronounce it properly you're not saying the same thing malach and malach okay 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 that was a great example i can't get it spelled exactly alike <laughs> all right